Hey, what's up guys? I'm Ray Torn and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 Legends of the Dead. So in today's episode, we're going to be putting down this rebellion and hopefully winning a war against the Byzantines. We'll have to see what we can do there. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and just let this play. And we were chasing down this guy here. I don't think we're going to catch him. Yeah, he's already going through the mountains here. So clearly that's not going to work out. We're already going over to this area though, so you can't change that. Yeah, they're just too far at this point. So I think what we're going to do... I was going to get these armies combining in this location, and we'll go after this army here instead. Yeah. So let's go and merge our troops here. You can see our allies are already going after that that army, so they know they know what we should be doing here. For whatever reason, this army is set to moving over to this province. I don't know why. Despite the fact that they're vastly outnumbered there. So I'm not entirely sure why they want to go there, but they have. And so we're going to go and help out, make sure that they get destroyed quickly. And we can see we've got a little bit of war score from that. So what we're going to do is let's go after this army here. And I don't think we can get up there in time to stop them from taking that, which might result in them winning their war. I think it could. So we're going to try and stomp our way up there. Let me see. Will we take attrition? We win it. Only if we go into this location. It's only 52. But yeah, we'll, we'll start moving up there. It's unfortunate we're dragging along our allies. I'd prefer if they went and did something else. Because we don't really need them to defeat this army here. And we have these armies over here, which are a problem. So after we defeat them, we'll then move towards here. We won't be able to do any sieges, I don't think. I wanted to completely destroy the rebellion, but I think if we do that, then it might result in us losing the, the Byzantine War. We're training up our daughter here. And so we can get her the callous traits, arrogant, or compassionate. We have her going with the martial education. She's already diligent and chaste. So she's turning out to be a pretty good character, but then she gets the, the callus here. Uh, let's have her go with... Yeah, why not compassionate? Fits with her, her traits that she already has here. Yeah, I just don't think we'll be able to get up there in time, guys. They'll, they'll surely finish their siege before we're able to get over there. And then their army isn't really doing much here. Not enough to, to stop them from losing that conflict. Alright, so we did get an event here about a shady discussion. This is one we've seen many times before. So we could warn our vassal, but he is currently in this rebellion against us. So I don't know that we'd want to do that. At the same time, I don't really care about these two courtiers either, though. Yeah, this is just one of those events where you're just like, why am I even messing around with this at the moment when I'm in this war? Yeah, we'll warn them, despite the fact that we're currently at war with them. Uh, so we'll actually take casualties going through here, too. So that's a total of 100 casualties that we're going to lose. He has finished his siege here, so that means that he's going to win the war. And I don't know what happens in that case, because he becomes independent. But he's still in this war with us, where we're trying to arrest him, so it could mess the whole thing up. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, that's kind of weird. That's a weird situation. We'll have to see, I guess, if that does, in fact, make him independent. Yeah, because it is done. Loses that territory. And so that makes him a... Uh, well, maybe he's not a duke now. He's still considered our vassal for right now. So yeah, I guess we'll, we'll see what happens here. Yeah, he has finished up that, uh, that conflict. And our allies doing the siege here. Problem is, they probably won't complete it. As soon as this battle starts, they'll likely join in on it and you see he's going off to sea okay that's okay that's frustrating because <laughs> now they're gonna probably go down here to our capital and we took the attrition here for moving in that location it's not a lot but uh we're over here losing territory in this area while we're chasing down their armies we're not gonna catch this one they're gonna get too far away probably not getting there in time yeah it's just too too far now you can take a look and see exactly how long you'll get there. It's going to be uh, 42 days and they will take off. Let me just see here. Yeah, they'll all be gone well before then. Okay, so I guess you got to come back down. This is a little irritating and you can't march through here because then you're going to take attrition everywhere you go. 
You're not going to catch them. They're going to go elsewhere. Well, maybe not, because this here is our territory. So we could go through this way and then get over to these guys. Or she's still on the problem that they're probably going to come over here and siege our capital. At least that's what I expect. So yeah, I feel like you got to go... I feel like you got to go south again. There's no way around it. We got to take out that army. Can't let them sit there and take our capital. And then I would like to come over here and stop this siege here next. So yeah, they are going to our capital as expected. Now, one of our enemies left the war. I'm guessing that was somebody in the Byzantine War. So yeah, we'll make our way down here. Attack them. And of course our allies will come and assist us, so them doing that siege was uh, pointless. They are going to get out of there before we can attack them, so let's go over this way. Hmm, maybe it would have been, you know, it's quicker to move this way. Yeah, far quicker. So let's go ahead and now attack over here. And we should catch them. And we got all of our allies assisting us, so we'll be able to wipe them out. Let's just hope we capture somebody important. And it looks like our wife is pregnant as well. Well, that's unfortunate because we weren't trying to have any more children. She's 41. It seems uh, far too frequent that women in their 40s have children, which again isn't uh, impossible, as I mentioned before, but it's it's a rare thing. Uh, maybe not so much today where we have all kinds of uh, you know, reasons for that. You know, many women get like fertility treatments. And so that's the reason why, you know, they're able to, more likely to have children in the later stages of their life. But yeah, that was not uh, the norm throughout history. It was a more rare thing. Alright, so I guess with them defeated, we might have to now focus on this other conflict over here. We do have the ticking war score, but to do a siege, yeah, I'm not going to march all the way up there and do that siege. If we're over in the area here, we could take care of that army. We're already capped on the battle, so there's no point on doing that. Basically, just getting the the war score from the held objectives and doing sieges is our really our only answer. And like I said, if we take too long here to do this attack, which I don't even know if we can win right now, not without the assistance of our allies, it does look like they're all coming to to help us. And so let's go ahead and engage the Byzantines here in the hills, where we'll have that bonus, and maybe we can get a victory against them. So we did lose some stress here. I won't read through all that right now. It does suck that we take attrition as we go through this territory here. Uh, we did get a stewardship perk, excellent. So what we're gonna get is the golden obligations where we can demand payment for hooks. So that would be helpful. And then we might wanna get the war profit tier next. Monthly income while at war, that would be really helpful. Uh, we're earning income currently. But I wonder if we have anybody we can demand. I don't know if we even have any hooks at the moment. Yeah, it doesn't look like we know any secrets or anything, so yeah, there's nothing we can do at the moment. But we might want to switch over our spy master to try and get us some secrets. So there's nowhere, you know, throughout our lands here we might want to find secrets. Maybe just in our capital for now. Just because, you know, everybody's rebelling against us at the moment. Alright, so yeah, we'll see if we can't get over to this territory here. Could engage them there, but again, the uh, yeah, we already got the 50% for the battles. So I just don't know that it's worth it. I think we should be engaging the Byzantines and dragging our allies along with us, though. They're, okay, here, here they come. I was gonna say, it looks like they're gonna stop and do a siege there. So yeah, we'll probably engage them here is what I'm thinking. Do take more attrition, unfortunately. But it's all pretty low at only 53, so it certainly could be worse. And I'm trying to get here before they finish the siege, which will be done, well, eight months. It's a long time. Okay, it looks like, I mean, it's sad, but uh, she miscarried. Uh, so unfortunately, because this is not our territory, it's not being considered defensive. Wow. Okay, so that's not going to work. Because of the rebellion here. So this is a, a rebel's territory. So that's not ours. Wow. Alright, so that's unfortunate. It's so basically you gotta do... Uh, unless they'll just straight up attack you. Or you can attack in the plains here. Or over here, but then you're 
attacking across a river, so obviously that doesn't work. And all this is across a river unless you go over here and then attack. Then you're not getting any defensive bonuses, but neither are they. But they have to finish, they have to stop their siege here if they want to bring these troops to assist. So you do have that advantage. Otherwise, they wouldn't have enough troops. But without the defensive bonuses, we might not be able to win. Because, yeah, that would leave us with 9,000 troops compared to, I think, what they have uh, about 11,000 or so. Let me see here. Yeah, about almost 11,000. So that could become a bit of a problem here. So we get an event here concerning one of our tax collectors. And so he can get the tough soldier trait. What's he currently have? Let's move him from misguided, misguided warrior to the tough soldier. Or instead, because they surely could do better. Yeah, we won't do that. We'll just go ahead and improve him. So they did finish up that siege there. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and attack here. This will bring in this army and probably this army as well. I don't know if we can win though. That's crossing a river too. Damn. The army is running low on uh, supplies. Yeah, that's crossing a river as well. So we can't avoid the river crossing, unfortunately. Now what we could do is take a look at our commanders and see, I don't think anybody has the the trait that lets you avoid that. We just don't have very many options when it comes to commanders because of course all of our all of our people are rebelling at the moment. Yeah, there's no other option. So with the assistance of all of our allies here, there's another 2,000 here. So maybe that might be enough. We gotta do something against the Byzantines though. Uh, so we did learn of our uncles. He's still rebelling against us, it doesn't really matter, but his attempted murder secret. So we could blackmail him eventually. All right, so here's the big battle, guys, against the Byzantines that stops their siege there. And we do outnumber them, and it's taken a while for these guys to get over here. So it looks like we will win the battle. All right, excellent. So that puts them on the retreat. Gives us some war scores so we don't lose the conflict. And now we can focus on putting down this rebellion. Alright, so that helped out quite a bit. That's the full 50% from the battles won here. Although there isn't a max uh, for this one because we're defending. Alright, so let's go ahead and go after... I mean, we could take this because that is a rebel location. But yeah, they're just over here doing these sieges and stuff. They're not in our capital. Taking uh, their capital location, let me just take a look and see where his capital is. Is it right here? It is. So you could march through here, take that one back, and then take that one. But maybe we should finish uh, the sieges over here first because you got your allies over to help you. And take all these over so that when the Byzantines march back through here, that way we can get defensive bonuses in the area. Of course, you finish up the siege, then it would be your territory again. But uh, I don't know how long it will take to get them defeated since we have to do sieges. So I think it's best to go ahead and take these, and that should help us with the war score as well. Uh, so this is an event about a, a gift. Who is this for? Is this for our wife? Yeah, it's for our wife. And we really don't have the money to be spending at the moment. So yeah, we're just going to have to go with this option. We're in the middle of a war. I feel like she'll understand. Alright, so yeah, we'll do this siege first. And this is our allies' war. He was defeated. Like I said, they'll probably be broken up. Because one of these wars is a dissolution war, I think. Or maybe not. Maybe that one ended. Okay, so that was just, that was just the independence one. So somebody was gained, uh, granted independence. And thus our ally is now weaker over there. Alright, so we're going to do this siege here. Which will take us uh, three months, so not very long. Our allies should hopefully do some sieges as well. Take over all this uh, rebel territory here. And we're finding a lot of secrets over there in the capital. And so maybe we'll make use of these. Of course, if they're rebelling against us, the blackmail probably isn't going to work. So you got to wait. So of course when we retake this occasion here, that'll get us back up to the 50%. In addition to uh, hopefully ticking up some of the war score here against uh, those rebels. So our daughter has come of age, and well that's interesting. She's 
pretty solid. Are these twins? Yeah, we have two twin daughters. I didn't realize that. But anyways, they both did very, very well. Okay, so she's already got a betrothal. Just waiting for him to come of age. And then we have our other daughter. She has not been betrothed yet, so we need to find her spouse. But not our priority right now. We want to get this war, these two wars, dealt with here. And they are attacking our capital over here, and we have 12 months to get over there. So basically, as soon as we finish this, we'll have to go over there to put them down. Can't let them take the capital, because we don't know who they could end up capturing. They could capture us. All right, so with that one, you can see that the war score did go up in both of these locations. Uh, let's, hmm, you got the, the enemy army moving up here again. But yeah, we got to get over there. Let me just take a look here. They're not doing great. See if we can't get them to attack us somewhere. Okay, so now they're going over this way. Hmm. What's the quickest way? I think we're just going to march to our capital now because we can't let them take that. Kind of sucks that we're, we're bouncing back and forth. It's just not the most efficient way to do this. We cannot let them take the capital, though. As I said, it's just uh, too risky that they capture somebody important or capture us and then win the war. So yeah, learning more people's secrets here. And you know, I think we might uh, change that event. And unfortunately, we do have plague. Let me just take a look at where this is at. So it's right here, and this is a, a major plague as well. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and change our spy master back to the disrupt schemes for now, just so we don't keep getting these events in this middle of this war, distracting us. We'll do the soft approach. So yeah, we'll march over here, put down this, uh, this siege. And yeah, this, this will get us a plague resistance bonus. This will be helpful. Hopefully our army is not bringing plague with them. And yeah, we'll, we'll get over here and get them defeated. It's just such a bummer that we're having to do it this way. Because we can't seem to focus on one conflict and, and get the win. But you can't just let one side win. While you neglect the other. Alright, so we'll have to march here next. See if we can catch them there. Now, we actually were able to engage part of the army, so maybe our allies can get the other part. And remember, we're getting that taking war score as well. So just stopping this does help us. And we're able to capture some of the enemies as well. Don't really need to go over here and assist them. We'll start moving over there, just in case we can get involved in the battle briefly. Yeah, it looks like we can. All right, excellent. Okay, so with them defeated, we'll now have to go back after the Byzantines. The ticking war score should be enough to help us win it. Yeah, that should be enough. So let's go and go after the Byzantines once more. Let me see how we want to do this. We could also just work on doing a siege real quick. Because we don't have to worry about them. If they win that one siege, it's not that big of a deal. Just to try and make this go a little quicker. Let me see how the best way to go about doing this would be. Probably come over here and take this location. So let's go ahead and do that. Because that should be enough. And she's pregnant again. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it just seems like... I think until they're like 45, it feels like they, they don't have any penalty to... To having children, but well, maybe they do. You have to dig into the mechanics to see for sure. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and let this marriage happen. Now that he has come of age. Oh, that's interesting. This Liberty War. He has won it. Okay, wasn't expecting that. I thought he'd lose that that conflict. Yeah, it looks like he's uh, gonna win. So he imprisons all those rebels. And so it didn't go as bad as it could have went. 
I guess we'll be engaging these few troops over here and getting them wiped out real quick. I'm gonna event here a nose for profit. So this is an event due to our lifestyle. Allows us to get a trinket. So we can either get an expensive one or a cheap one. But you can see that the the expensive one has a high chance to be around the same price if not the, the cheapest uh, option here. Uh, because this one could end up with a 20% chance you pay 135. Well, this one is a 37% chance you only pay 70. So yeah, I think we're going to go with this. Even though this one has a higher chance of it going better. 38% chance that you don't uh, have to pay anything. And a 40% chance you only pay the 30. But let's go with the more expensive one. I'm kind of curious what we'll end up getting here. And we did fail it. Of course we did. We had the money, though, so that's fine. Uh, we'll take a look and see if we want to put that in place. Probably do, because we don't have the the greatest items over here. So this will reduce stress gain and increase our hostile scheme resistance. So we'll probably want to replace the milk tooth with that. Well, we actually might want to take this off because we don't want uh, fertility. So, you know, let's go ahead and replace that. We don't need any more children. So that could help a little bit. All right, so moving over to here to start that sea jump. Did lose that, but that was also uh, territory that was under one of our vassals, or rebellious vassals here. So let me just compare how long this is going to take compared to this one. So nine months to six months. Okay, so we're going to have to engage them there. Wasn't what I wanted to do, but uh, yeah, we need to make sure they don't take that location. And also, this is a place that is, is I think, in our control. Maybe not. It's not in our control, so we would not get the bonus. Okay, so we'll just stay here then. Let's let them take it. You know what, since it is ticking up so fast, I think we could get over here. We don't have to do the uh, attack. We can just stand nearby and then do the attack once we get the 100%, which, yeah, is right now. All right, excellent. So we'll be arresting everybody involved. We'll get 20 Dread will also get legitimacy. So we're going to imprison pretty much all of our vassals. And now we need to deal with them. Or like they escape or die. Yeah, it'd be wise for us to go ahead and, and deal with the 16 prisoners we currently have. And so we have the, the space for three titles. We used to have space for four, but we're, we lost a, a bit of our stewardship somehow. Maybe a trait that we had. Or maybe our wife has given us a bit less. Anyway, so it's now 11. And so that's three titles that we could take, but one thing to consider is that we actually have uh, multiple uh, baronies over here. And it's just not worth keeping the baronies, so I think we should give those out, and then we can actually take five titles. And we got a lot of titles we can take, guys, of all these people in the prison. So let's go ahead and go through each one of these and decide what we want to do with them. Um, so this guy's not a family member. Uh, he served as our spy master for a time. He's old, will likely die soon. Currently, his son would take over. We don't know anything about him. He currently has two titles. So he can only take over one of them. So what we'd probably do is take his main title from him. So we don't want to take this one here. That would also take the, the barony. Yeah, that gives you the barony too, so that works out. So let's go ahead and take that from him. And we no longer need to worry about him anymore. Now, do we want to man the 100 gold from him? It looks like we still do that, despite the fact that he doesn't have... Well, that's interesting. <laughs> despite the fact he doesn't have the title anymore, he can still demand the 100 gold, as if he was a count. Okay, sure, why not? We'll take the ransom. Not really too worried about him going out there. So yeah, we'll demand the ransom from him. So now we need to deal with our family members. We got several fam family members that rebelled against us. Of course, our uncle here, he was the one who caused this whole thing. And he's also the most powerful and certainly a problem. So I feel like we got to take at least this title from him, even though it's not worth much. Just keep him from expanding over this way. He could deal with the Byzantines down here. And so yeah, we won't be able to take all his titles. And honestly, because he started it, taking his titles probably isn't going to be enough. Now this is the most worthless of the titles. 
but it's the only one we're gonna be able to take. We can only take one. So we're gonna take this one simply because I don't want him expanding up here any further. Let's go ahead and take that from him. He'll be pissed. We might want to leave him leave him in the prison, or else like execute him or something. But by executing him, we're gonna spend our, our piety and also decrease the house unity and piss off everybody in our family. And so it'd probably be better. Yeah, I think it'd probably be better to just go ahead and let him die in the prison. We'll just keep him in there. We do need to give out some titles, by the way. So I might want to go ahead and do that. We have all our sons here. So we could give start giving them some titles. We haven't really looked at what our sons are currently doing. He's doing the entry education at the moment. I don't think we changed this either. So we could change him over to this would be diplomacy. We'll just leave him on the entry. Since he's already working on that. Even though it looks like he would be uh, good at diplomacy. But uh, we'll, we'll leave him on the, the entry. He's got that intelligent trait. But who is uh, currently his guardian? We are. And we're not even very good at that. But we do want to control his traits. So I guess we should leave him under our control. He doesn't have any of his traits currently. He's also a twin. Apparently we had a lot of twins. Is this his twin sister? Yeah. So he's got a twin sister here. We haven't really looked at all, any of our children, like exactly what they're doing. Uh, I suppose we'll leave her on the learning education. That's fine. Of course, we have our eldest daughters. We need to find her uh, a marriage. And maybe we'll find uh, a solid knight. Yeah, let's let's find a solid knight here. We do need some more alliances. I mean, we, we got all those allies now. I suppose we don't have to get another alliance. We could do an alliance with them since we're no longer allied with them. So if we want to continue to work with them, we'd have to uh, do another alliance. So he could do more long-term alliance with his son. He's 41, though. So he might be all right, although he does have several health issues. Seems he wouldn't accept a marriage alliance anyways, because we have too many alliances. And that was another thing to consider, is that we do have all these allies at the moment. And so yeah, let's just go ahead and get ourselves a, a new knight and say so we'll do that let's find our spouse we don't have to have inheritable traits but we do want this person to not be lowborn and then we're gonna go ahead and sort this my prowess and hopefully find somebody who's pretty solid uh, I've got a giant here but uh, he's got the great box and he's a little too old anyways at 45 another giant here of course, giants are going to have that higher prowess because they get the plus six from that. They were looking for somebody not so old. So let's look at maximum age 35. Kind of sort out some of these. Uh, here you got a young guy. He's Afghan, so he's not Persian. But he's robust, so maybe you uh, get that trait into your family. Of course, one issue is that he's sadistic and chaste. So he might have trouble having children. He's also not the right Muslim faith. So might want to go with somebody else. Uh, this guy's a, a better choice. He's got better traits. He also has the robust and he's our faith. And so he would be a solid choice. But there's a giant. And so we're going to do the marriage with the giant. Because why not? We want some giants in our family. Uh, this should be a matrilineal marriage as well. So they're actually of our dynasty here. Again, role play. we generally don't do those. But uh, we can do that in this one. All right, so the reason why I wanted to, to do that is because we can always give him a title, one of these baronies. It needs to be a place that we're going to keep, though. Now, some of these I'm definitely giving out because their development is too low, like this one over here. So we can grant that out. He doesn't have to be a baron, of course. We could make him a count. So that would be an option. But yeah, I wanted to do the marriage for that. And then we need to take a look at the rest of our kids here. So we already looked at him and her. And just see what they're doing, because I never did this here. So we got him doing stewardship. Okay, that's fine. I just want them to be like a, a variety of different things here. I guess we'll have him do the learning, since the other son is already doing the stewardship. And then with our last son here, he's also pensive. So they're all, they're all pensive. All right, so we'll have him go with the stewardship then. So just get them all set up. Uh, they do need to have guardians as well. Uh, the stewardship ones, we could be the guardian for them. How many children are we currently guardian for? 
just our air. Okay, so we do have one open slot then. So I don't think our daughter has a guardian yet. She's doing the learning education. So we'll find somebody for her. Somebody with a uh, very high learning. There's our wet nurse and court physician. She'd be an option. Seems like a solid choice. You could also do the Mufti. But well, she's a woman, so it's it's better to have a woman, you know, train up your daughter. And then we have our son here doing the stewardship, so I think he's the one we'll educate ourselves. Uh, does he already have a guardian? He does. It's currently our wife. She's also stewardship focused. Hmm. I'd prefer to educate... Let me just see, he's got the quick trait, and he doesn't. What about him? He does not. Okay, so yeah, I prefer to educate him, so not going to be happy that we're removing the Guardian. We're also going to lose some house unity from that. But that's fine. We're going to do, we're going to do his Guardianship. And then for this son, we'll probably do the Mufti for him. And then what, one more son remaining, and that's stewardship. Well, we could give him to our wife, since we did piss her off there. Is this the wife? No, that's not the right wife. It's this one. I don't even know the, <laughs> my wife's from each other. Uh, so let's go ahead and send that proposal. And then I'll prove her opinion again. Apparently we're friends with her wife. I never really looked at this uh, screen here. These are our friends. So we're friends with our brother. He did not rebel against us. So that's the reason why. I think he was like the only vassal that didn't rebel from uh, against us. Because we were friends. And he's actually quite impressive as well. Good knight. Yeah, not a bad character there. So that's one of our friends. We're also friends with our cousin. Okay, well, her her liege rebelled. And her father is, okay. Her father is the, the uncle who started this whole thing. But still, we're friends with her. And then we're, we're friends with her wife. Okay, so we hadn't looked at that. So I thought it was something we, could, we should check out. I was going to start handing these titles out, but let's see exactly what titles we have to hand out. So we need to, to finish taking all the titles so we know. Uh, so yeah, we'll go after, I mean, we already took one from him. We're keeping him in the prison. So we'll go after uh, this uncle next. This is Arslan, uh, which I believe, yeah, he's the one we had serving us as chancellor. So if we take his titles, he's not going to be happy with us. All of his titles are in the same location as well, except for that one. So I guess that's the one you'd want to take from him. But yeah, he's going to be really irritated when I take that from him. But he deserves it. He rebelled. There's penalties for rebelling. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and take, uh, that's also one of the baronies, I see. But he has no choice in the matter. Oh, it's under siege, so you can't take it from him. Oh, so we'll have to wait to deal with that one. Uh, what about this character here? So yeah, we'll take her two titles. That puts us two over. So we'll have to deal with that. And then we'll ransom her off. Uh, this guy here has just got the one barony. He was granted this, I think, by our father. Might have been a grandfather. Yeah, we're probably going to take his title as well. He's taking everybody's titles. We'll just create a whole new crop of, of noble vassals. So now we have our half-brother over here. Who also rebelled against us. And he's got all these titles here. So let me just take a look. Which one we want to take from him? Probably, probably this one. This one's uh, a little bit lower development, and this one's also in this territory where we want to. I don't know if we're going to create the duchy there. Actually, here's the duchy of Georgia, and we actually do have a title there already. So maybe we should take this one from him, leave him up over here. Yeah, I guess that's what we'll do. So let's go ahead and revoke. This title here, that'll give us two more that we got to hand out. And probably just leave him in prison as well, because he's just going to be unhappy with us. 
Uh, we are losing House Unity since we're taking all these titles from members of our house. And so that, you know, is to be expected. Uh, this is uh, another one of our uncles. He only has the one title. So that one's over here, you know, way over here. Now, he would make a good spy master. I think he might have been serving us in that role before, actually. Now, he's not uh, a very powerful character, so you could just kind of forgive him. Just have him, uh, you know, we could just get a hook from him. Even get the money that way. Could just release him. You lose dread, but I don't even know if we have any dread. Oh, we do. We have 20 dread. Well, that's going to take down anyways. And so, yeah, we could just try and make sure that we don't hiss off everybody. And again, he's useful as a, a spy master. So we can put him back onto our council. And don't take, you know, all of the, the titles away. Yeah, he's pretty solid. He's young. He's got a son here as well. So I think that would be the best option for this particular character. Is just go and forgive him. He was led astray. I mean, we did some tyrannical stuff as well, so <laughs> we'll forgive him. We'll go ahead and release him. We'll lose the dread, unfortunately. And then the rest of these characters are not ones that you take titles from. They don't have any titles. So you're just ransoming them off. And so we'll deal with them later. I feel like we spent enough time sitting in here. We need to give uh, titles out, actually. So further to show that we're not upset at our uncle here, we're gonna actually grant him more titles. So we're gonna grant him these two here. We need somebody who's loyal to us for the spy master position. And so let's go ahead and do that. And that'll also help make him a powerful vassal, hopefully. And so we just, we just need to strengthen somebody and somebody who you know likes us and so now he's at a 76 and so he would be a good candidate to be our spy master so we'll probably probably replace him i replace this character here because he's just kind of a nobody our uncle's not quite as good but yeah this uh makes sense to keep him keep him real happy with us so he's at 86 so we got a spy master who loves us he's back in his old position he's been forgiven we brought him back into the fold uh we could also grant titles to this lowborn character who served as well as Marshal in the war. In fact, he's been leading our troops. And so yeah, it makes sense to reward him by maybe making him a Baron or even a powerful Count. Let me just see if there's anybody else we want to put in this position before I go and do this. I want to say he's the best character we had. So we could give him titles. Yeah, it makes sense to do that. Could give him the titles up here. Let's give him both of these. And that would get rid of three of them and put us back under the cap. Yeah, that would work out nicely. Uh, of course, development here is very high because it's next to our capital. So you should probably keep this one. Yeah, that makes sense to keep that one. We want to get rid of that. And then we have the baronies here as well. That you could give, uh, give out. So maybe we'll just make him a baron of this location here. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Let's make him a baron. Just of right there. That'll make him happy. But we still need to grant out two more titles at this point. But we have all these baronies that we can grant out. So we know we have the ones here and the one over here. So we'll probably grant out this one. And I think we have another knight that we might be able to give it to. Let me just take a look. That's the caravan master. We have our chancellor. I don't know if we're going to leave him in that position. He's currently our best at the moment. I don't know how the powerful vassal situation will, will change up here. Yeah, you could make him a... Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. Give him a, a barony. So we'll give him this one here. So just that one. Make him a baron. And then we just need to give out one more title. The one over here, and maybe we'll grant that out to our daughter's husband once he accepts that. All right, excellent. So we took care of all of our our titles for the most part. Got some ransom as well. Keep us uh, fighting in the war. Looking good financially. And apparently we're being raided up over here in our uncle's territory. 
Okay, well, we can't really deal with that right now. So that ransom's been accepted as well. Excellent. And maybe we'll spend some of this on some buildings. And then he has now moved to our country. Should start serving as a knight soon. But for right now, let's go ahead and grant him uh, one of these two barony titles. Let me just take a look and see which one we want to give him. Well, yeah, there's the, the two of them here. It seems this one's slightly more upgraded. So we'll go ahead and give him that one. Yeah. So let's find him over here. And then grant him this one little barony. There we go, beautiful. He still doesn't like us all that much. We have the alliance with him, of course. Uh, we might want to take a look and see if there's any other allies, uh, alliances we can form, such as with our uncle over here. Yeah. So let's make sure he's an ally. That makes sense. And yeah, we'll deal with the rest of this later. Uh, we might want to take a look at the control situation, because it could have some territory like this one here that we have control issues, so let's go ahead and increase that. I think everything else is good. I think all of our powerful vassals are in the prison right now. Okay, so now we're going to try and attack over here. Because this is now our territory again. Form the alliance with our uncle. He should like us a lot now. Doesn't look like we would engage them there, unfortunately. All right, so we could go over here. This is their territory now. We just need to get them engaged in a battle. We need them to start a siege and then attack them in that location. It looks like they're gonna go back to their own territory here. And our house unity is back up to harmonious. So did that go up because we allied with our uncle? And we're just barely in it. We'll have to do one of these other decisions, but let's, let's get through this war, guys. Focus on getting this done. So they're going back into their own territory. We'll just go here. If they decide to attack us, then they decide to attack us. They'll get the defensive bonuses, but we have our allies nearby. They're probably not going to. And then maybe our allies will do these uh, sieges over here, perhaps. But yeah, we'll get our territory back and just try and get this win. Remember, we're going to get like 2,000 something gold once we, we win this war. Are you serious? <laughs> that uncle I just worked so hard towards raising up, he just died from stress. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. So his two sons have inherited those uh, territories. Yeah, that's a real shame. So it didn't work out the way we wanted. Uh, we had a daughter born though. Uh, we're gonna name her, good Persian name. How about Nazila? Doesn't have any uh, traits or anything like that. Yeah, that's a, that's a real shame. So now we need to find another spy master. Okay, so we can see that these two brothers here, the one who remained loyal, he needs a position. He's now a powerful vassal. And I think we should reward him. In fact, I almost want to give him a territory. I don't have anything to give him. I kind of want to reward him for staying loyal. Uh, as far as what he would do best, probably the spy master position which just opened up. He's not great. Yeah, there's not anything else that he'd do really well in. Nothing to fit with his education as a mastermind philosopher. Uh, who's the other powerful vassal? So this is our other brother. Did we just not take a title from him? That just seems like, because he, he's certainly not mad at us about taking a title. But he's a rebellious, rebellious vassal. So yeah, I must have just made him pay the money on accident. So he was somebody that we could have taken territory from. Let's see where all his, his territory is all through here. So we could make him the chancellor, since this guy is not uh, anybody important. So you know what, let's go ahead and do that. Let's try and appease our two brothers. So make him the chancellor, and make our loyal brother our spy master. Who, not quite as high opinion as I like. Maybe we can boost that up some. We could always work on that, actually. Go ahead and uh, try swaying him. So yeah, we'll go and start doing that. So yeah, real shame that we lost our uncle there. Now we'll get the siege done here in five months. This one will be done in three months. And they may just straight up attack us here. Maybe not. 
Yeah, they're working on a siege over here. It's in the hills. Let me see. So four months to 44 days. So we should have time to go over there and attack them. But then that would also end this. So we'd have to wait a few days before we started moving to make sure that siege gets finished up. Uh, we did get another stewardship perk, which we're going to go with the War Profiteer. So just to show you guys what this is going to change it to, it's at 3.1 right now. So selecting that would boost it up to 5.7. So definitely advantageous there. And we're just going to decline this betrothal with our aunt. We'll worry about marriages later, guys. So they finished up that siege. Okay, I thought ours was going to be done first, but that's not the case. Uh, so we finished up both of these two sieges. We're now at 66%. So let's go ahead and march after them here in the hills. We'll want to go around and then... Well, can't go that way. So you have to go this way. Yeah, we'll have to go this way and into there. Uh, we are short on supplies, though. So we're actually going to get a penalty if we attack them right now. Yeah, I don't think there's any way around it, because otherwise they're going to finish up a siege. We have so many bonuses, though, and they're also running low on supplies. Hopefully our allies come help us. Oh, so they're going to attack them there while we attack them here. Okay, that works out fine as well. So we've seen this event before, and we do want to get that. Increases of Henuit close family and counselors. 100% chance that we'll pay less, 90 gold, because of our high stewardship, and it's also diplomacy challenge, so combined. And we'll also lose stress because we're diligent. So let's go with that option. You can always reduce stress a little bit. It is kind of high. At the moment, we really need to do something about that. But we've, we've got to finish up this damn war. Which we should be done soon. After these battles, yeah, that's that's enough. But we'll want to let this other battle finish up as well. Because we might be able to capture some additional enemies here. And we'll take a look at all this in a minute. Let's finish up this battle here. And we did get increased levy size here, or one of our uh, counties did. Alright, so with those battles completed, just make sure we don't have any prisoners we might want to ransom off that would be given back, which we do not. So yeah, we won this war and thus we'll get a ton of money as we established last episode. So this worked out well. We put down the rebellion, we got a lot of uh, territory out of it, uh, got control of our vassals, so we don't have to worry about them in the future. And now we can go and enforce our demands here. And this is going to give us a lot of legitimacy. What is our legitimacy currently at? It's probably pretty low. Uh, right, rightful. Yeah, this is going to give us a ton. So we're at 740 currently. So I think it was 400 something. That should tick us on up to the true. And so yeah, that'll be really helpful. We'll get those bonuses. I guess it tells you that here that it'll tick you up to true. We'll also get prestige. We'll get piety. And of course, the 2,098 gold. It's going to be incredibly helpful. So that did not go well for the Byzantine Emperor. And we got a new uh, Legend Seed, a Valiant Defense. I want to take a look at that. Let's go to Spanner Troops. This is the Valiant Defense. So these are the modifiers we'll get as the owner. So the Prestige, this can all vary based on different factors, but... Uh, you can see that we could get Diplomacy for level of fame from it. This is the promoter bonuses, so those that are promoting it will get those bonuses. And then here's the barony and county modifiers. So the station men at arms would get increased damage, and we'd have increased popular opinion. And it costs 280 to create it, 5.16 to maintain it. So we can select our protagonist, which will, of course, select ourselves here. And then at the fame level, this is what you'd get. So you get the legendary statue. You get the access to the commission legend artifact decision. And we'll get 111 legitimacy. You see that these would go up and you get better bonuses with the higher level it is. We're not going to do that right now. Because we have the money. And there's really no reason not to. This, this character, I mean, you can see he did quite well. I think this is a fantastic character to do what I put off doing. Which, of course, if I hadn't put this off, then we wouldn't have had that problem in the first place. Because we wouldn't have to worry about our uncle trying to leave the empire. Or leave our... our really, it's just a duchy, basically, because we don't have a kingdom here. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and create a second duchy, and then create a kingdom. There's nothing stopping us at this point. What I didn't show is, if you hover over 
Uh, this here tells you why you got it. A valiant defense against all odds, Marad has repelled the hordes of the Byzantine Empire. Yeah, this one we won't be able to do until we get our level of fame higher. And what I really like about this one here as the legitimizing legend is that it gives you that renown. Also gives you uh, stewardship for promoters, renown for them as well, and then development growth. So I almost feel like, I mean, both of these are solid, honestly. Anyways, let's go ahead and create a duchy. We have to decide which one we want to create. We have quite a few options when it comes to uh, duchies to create. So whichever duchy we create should be one that we're willing to lose the territory to because remember our one of our other sons will inherit that duchy title or we could grant it out to somebody. We talked about rewarding our brother here. So you could create, I believe this is the duchy he's in. So you could create that duchy for him and make him our first duke. You know, obviously after we create the kingdom title. So that would be an option. We don't have any territory over there that would go to him either. Because yeah, if you were to say create the, the duchy of uh, Georgia here. If we create that one, then when our son inherited it, inherits it, we lose all that territory to him. There is a duchy title here, Armenia. You lose those two. And this one here. So the better option is to instead create one of these duchy titles in areas where we don't control any territory. So here, here, or here. And so I think rewarding our uncle for his loyalty, he's one of the only, if not the only, vassal who stayed loyal to us, I think makes sense, guys. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and create, we'll create this duchy title here and then eventually grant that to him. And so this is gonna cost us 212 and then get us uh, legitimacy and prestige. And that will be enough for us to create the kingdom title, which will cost 425 and get us more prestige and legitimacy. And so now we are king, the first king of our dynasty. And then this will show us that we have a court now. And so we'll enter that in a minute. But we'll have to get all our stuff put in place. And that'll give us some additional bonuses. We can also do different decisions and hold court. We found a holy order now. I have a, bun a whole bunch of stuff we can do here. But before I do any of that, well, let's go ahead and grant out this duchy tunnel. Because yeah, if we looked at this, it'd be one of our other sons that inherited it. That's interesting. He would only inherit the duchy title and wouldn't get any counties. Hmm. So you could kind of create a duchy title that you don't have any counties to and it'd be a way to, you know, basically get more titles for your, your main heir. That's pretty interesting. He would just lose it immediately, wouldn't he? Because I think you can't have a duchy title if you don't have a county. So I'm not entirely sure how that would, what would happen there. Anyways, it's a tactic we can make use of. We'll take a look at that later because we already know we're going to get this one out. We can always create other duchy titles. Uh, we're going to make him a duke. And this will make him like us a lot. And it's to reward him for his loyalty. And so yeah, we'll get 60 opinion. I did want to take a look before we do that. Of who all we're losing when it comes to vassals. Uh, he could actually do this war for us. I assume he would. And go ahead and attack that guy and get him conquered. That still needs to be done. So we'll be losing her as a vassal. She's already uh, currently captured by somebody. And then you also have... Is there anybody else in there? It looks like that's it. That's the only vassal we lose. Okay, so yeah, let's go ahead and, and grant Manu the Brave this title. And so now we got a hundred opinion with him. He absolutely loves us. And of course, he's our spy master, so that's important for that reason. But yeah, we just want to reward those who remain loyal. Let's go and take a look at our royal court. So this looks fancy. Yeah, very nice royal court here. Much different from the Christian ones we've seen in the past, in our past playthroughs. And we don't really have much to place just yet. We do have our, our you know, the base ornaments that you start with, your dynasty and house banners. So we're going to get, get those put in place. Since that's all we got at the moment. Yeah, those will increase our prestige and our renown. And also give us some increased opinion. Powerful vassals. And courtiers and guests. And this is also getting us some court grandeur. So we take a look at that, where we're currently at. We're at the lowest level of everything. 
so we don't have to pay anything. But clearly you're gonna to want to invest in that a bit. We have the diplomatic court currently. The other option is scholarly court. This is all because we have that ceremonious ethos for our culture. So this one's nice because you get that increased uh, acceptance for the offer vassalage based on your grandeur. So as you get that higher and higher, it's more likely that people will just accept becoming your vassal without having to go to war. Uh, the tyranny gain reduction is nice, counts our opinion, that's helpful, especially if you keep powerful vassals in those positions. And then the max personal schemes is always helpful to have as well. Uh, scholarly courts, the inspired characters arriving at the court more frequently, I guess that's all right. Might get you some nice items. But yeah, this bonus, don't really need that. The learning per level of fame, that's helpful. It'll give you a little bit of extra learning. But really the best bonus here is the monthly lifestyle experience of plus 10%. That's like a whole nother education level for all your characters. But uh, yeah, I don't know if it's better than the bonuses you're getting here. Because of that, this one, and uh, the personal scheme. Of course, we haven't really been using personal schemes much. So there's that to consider as well. This does have a cost and prestige to change, which we don't have a lot of prestige. So we'll probably just leave it at the diplomatic court for now. Let me know what you guys are thinking. But which one should we use? Remember, it also impacts the uh, trait that the courtiers get, learning or diplomacy. Yeah, let me know what you guys are thinking. I think this one kind of does fit our uh, culture a bit more. I suppose, but yeah, either option would work. Not something we're gonna change right now, but I did want to take a look at it. Our current language is Iranian, and we'll be changing that. Since, you know, we're the Persians, we don't want to change that. But you can just see, we're not getting a ton of court grandeur from that. Like if you just look at the Greek one, you're getting 5.32. Arabic is actually lower. Yeah, just looking at some of the bonuses you get for other places. I mean, it's really not bad. Yeah, not too bad compared to other ones. Not as high as Greek. Yeah, nice little court ranger bonus. Uh, but yeah, we clearly need to spend a bit more uh, on our amenities because we're spending the, the low level. Uh, let's be uh, let's be cautious with this because while we do want to get it higher to get these additional bonuses, you know, the tyranny game would be nice. You know, that lets those uh, courtiers get that trait, which apply to our, our sons if they stay in court long enough. The imprisoned chance, super helpful. That's the better trait. Prison chance increased further. Monthly renown. That's uh, why you really want to get to to level nine if you can, and then that gets you the max personal schemes. So you know we do want to get it uh, higher. You need to be cautious with it because you know this gets kind of expensive if you're invested in it too much. Um, so let's go and go with the increased prestige here, for decent fashion. With the food, maybe just go with that level for right now. I need to pay attention to where this is moving to. And then this the servants. Let's go up to some servants here. So that gets us up to level 5 eventually. Okay. It's going to cost us 1.62. What if we just put them all in the middle here? Get you moving towards 6, but it's only 2.17. I suppose that's what we'll do. Let's put them all at level 3 for now. Let's apply that. Alright, so that's where our court grandeur is sitting. And yeah, we're now we're now king. So we don't have to worry about, you know, somebody becoming a duke and then leaving our, our realm. And we're looking pretty mighty after that uh, victory. Our color has changed as well. And so now we could potentially get uh, dukes as vassals. You might see those pop up in here, people who would be willing to become our vassals. Yeah, we actually have neighbors here now that are willing to accept. Have to give them religious exemption in order for them to accept it. So let's just take a look and see all those characters that are willing to become our vassals. So you got this guy over here. Let's take a look at this character. Oh, he's willing to become our vassal. Well, we're not going to do that because he'd be far too powerful of a vassal. And we'd have a, a rival Persian in our court who just has all this territory. Yeah, he's just too powerful. We need to take his territory from him. We need to come down to size. Uh, but yeah, he would be willing to, to accept, no exemption required, but again, he's just too powerful. So we're not gonna do that. These two here though, I'm actually fine with making those two our vassals. We don't need to expand that way with war. So you know what, let's go ahead and do that. We'll give him the religious exemption. Same thing with this character. So let's expand our our kingdom without war. 
Uh, we can pardon our brother as well. We'll get some more knights here eventually. And we still have to deal with all those prisoners. So there's a ton of prisoners in here that we still haven't uh, dealt with yet. Some of these we're leaving in, as we already discussed. But these other ones, we do need to deal with them. 13 prisoners. That's a lot. Maybe we'll get a little bit of money out of them. Of course, we're sitting on a ton of money, so we're going to want to spend that. Uh, we need to do something about our stress. We should probably celebrate, in some fashion, uh, the fact that we are now the king. And so there's a couple of things we could do. Uh, we could do a grand tour. So that would be one way to... Basically, make ourselves known to all our vassals, tour around our realm. There's a lot of different options here for what type of tour we want to do. It'd probably be a majesty tour. I think that makes the most sense. We got money, we don't really need to do the taxation tour. And so, yeah, we could do that. That'd be one option. Probably not going to reduce our stress by a lot, though. If we're wanting to do something for stress, could just do like a, a feast to celebrate. That'd always be an option. Our character still has to do the hajj as well. We should probably try not to do the hajj, you know, super late in our character's life every time. And so you could do it a little bit earlier. Could do a big grand tournament. We haven't done one of those yet. So that'd be a, a way to celebrate, uh, you know, being a king now. So a lot of options. Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments. What should we do for our first activity? We have a ton of money. Uh, we also need to construct buildings. Kind of got off that for a while. So we could go ahead and upgrade this. That makes sense. Upgrade our, our capital. And then we can start upgrading the buildings in there as well. In fact, let's go ahead and do that now. We know we're going to want to do that. So we can upgrade the capital there. We can also invest in some of this other territory uh, that we have. Because we haven't really been investing in them much. Got our new territory over here too. Uh, we do have the, the duchy tunnel here already with a great burial site. Yeah, we can create additional duchy tunnels. Of course, nothing that we're not willing to lose to our sons. But yeah, I was thinking using that money to create one more duchy tunnel. So that it will go to a son, and then, uh, you know, it'd be kind of weird because he wouldn't have any counties there. So I don't know how exactly that would work out. But yeah, that'd be an option as well. The next war, once we're ready to do a war, will be against this guy. We're going to try and take over all this territory here that's rightfully ours. And make our kingdom look a little bit better. Now, I don't know if we're going to want to do that war just yet. We should probably spend some of this money we have on improving our men-at-arms. In fact, because we're a king getting another men-at-arms... However, we're going to want to wait to do that until after we get access to the, the heavy cab, which shouldn't be much longer, five years. And so we'll leave that slot open. What we could do is invest in building all the ones we currently have, build them up a little bit more. Make use of that, that money for our troops. Even though this guy's troops aren't much, much of a problem, you can see that our numbers are not quite where we want them to be at. I mean, they're going to go up to 6,000 though, so that's not bad. Uh, we should also take a look at our... Our tax people, our tax uh, collectors. Look at the situation there, because this is what have all changed as well. Actually, it seems these two got flipped. Okay, so we need to fix that. Let me go ahead and do that. Because, yeah, this is maybe why so many people rebelled on us, because this gives a negative... Uh, this one here gives that negative 30 opinion. I think it was really just the tyranny is why everybody rebelled, but, yeah, this got all flip-flopped. And so we're going to put the, the powerful vassals back into the the tax collector where we had him before. The rest of these guys can stay under him. So at least these ones. And I'll have to take a look at the other ones. And see if we might want to flip-flop any of them. Like where's the, the giant? Okay, here he is. So we might want to have him go into his as well. That puts five and five. So it's even. So I think that's fitting. Again, you don't want you don't want to put too many into uh, this one because it hits our our prestige. And so I think this is pretty good. I think we'll leave this as is. That's an awesome number of knights, but uh, they'll be okay. Yeah, this guy really doesn't like us. Okay. So still got quite a few vassals that are a little unhappy with us, but they'll be alright. Alright, so we uh, we'll make that adjustment there, and yeah, we got. Plenty of money to spend on an activity and, and just uh, buildings, whatever we want, men-at-arms. Uh, so I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. We knocked out those two wars, put down the rebellion, and defeated the Byzantine Empire. Uh, if you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. We hope to see you on the next one, and thanks for watching.